right at the heart of Newtonian mechanics, was a problem which, if it couldn't be solved, endangered the whole belief that ultimately everything was mathematically predictable. Because it was to do with the one thing Newton was supposed to have absolutely solved, the orbits of the solar system. See, the genius of Newton's equations is that if you have two bodies, one orbiting the other, like the Earth going around the Sun, the equations of motion allow you to tell the exact nature of their orbits and to predict precisely where both bodies will be at any time in the future. The claim of Newton and Laplace is that you simply scale that up and you can predict everything about the universe. Once you've got a solution, you, you can say to me, well, um, uh, I'd like to know where that body is going to be at such and such a time. And that could be at any time in the future or any time in the past. I can just plug in the numbers, the time that you want, and out will come the answer. And it'll give me essentially the coordinates and, and uh, velocity of where that body will be. The same mathematics that governed the orbits of the planets also governed motion here on Earth. It was the bedrock of Newtonian science that if two objects began in almost identical orbits, they would continue in almost identical orbits, the difference between them never growing. So if you knew the orbit of one, you could predict the orbit of the other. And in theory, that's fine. In practice, what happens is that as soon as you add just one more body, just three, suddenly, you cannot solve the equations and you cannot predict anything. Every major mathematician from Newton onwards had hoped that one day what they called the three-body problem would be solved. But then in 1889, a French mathematician called Henri Poincaré discovered there was no way of predicting the orbits. In some cases, no matter how similar the paths were at the start, if there was any difference at all, eventually one would fly off on a different and totally unexpected and unpredictable path. Prediction, Poincaré lamented, becomes impossible. He saw something behaving in a way that he didn't expect, and he realized it was to do with the initial conditions and what we now call sensitivity to initial conditions. And that's what was unexpected, that if you just tweaked something a very little bit, you could get a huge difference in outcomes. That was where he actually discovered what we now call mathematical chaos. Poincaré had glimpsed a profound truth about the planets and their orbits. What disturbed him was that he realized this unpredictable behavior might be present throughout nature. He realized a small disturbance, no more than the flapping of a butterfly's wings, might be enough to create a storm where none was predicted. This was a very different world to Newton's. And I think the interesting thing is, is the fact that he was so himself, even Poincaré, the sort of greatest mathematician around at the time, was still immersed in that view of thinking that things would all work out nicely, that everything in the end behaved properly. And he was horrified when he discovered the way these solutions worked out and you could get this, this what we now call chaotic behavior. Um, it was quite shocking to him. Poincaré's discovery struck at the root of a view of the world which neither he nor his contemporaries were yet willing to give up. The world in which he was living and moving was still very much one that was embedded in that Laplacian view. This very strange behaviour that he discovered was sort of glossed over by the commentators. People were just not ready to hear that their world was not as orderly as they'd always believed. Then in 1914, in Sarajevo, a tiny disturbance did push the whole world system from its course. This was the tiny disturbance that started the uncontrollable storm.
In hindsight, we can see how appallingly prescient Poincaré's discovery had been. But at the time, the rest of the world was just not ready to listen. They were still determined to believe that they lived in a Newtonian world, where even the complexities of human affairs could be predicted and the war would be over by Christmas. When World War I broke out, they all wheeled out their artillery, confident reality could be made to follow their plans. After all, the same mathematics which predicted the orbits of the planets also governed the firing of artillery. The mathematics of ballistics told them exactly where the shells would land. Of course, at the beginning of the 20th century, ballistics was essentially firing at a stationary object. And you might have to fire over something, so you might not be able to see what you were firing at. So the mathematicians had, had sort of sorted it out. They had range tables and so on. The magic of science, this uh, uh, predictability of things through mathematics, science is not just uh, uh, proving theorems, it's to give us some power over nature about uh, uh, what happens, predicting an eclipse is this kind of power. Uh, building um, steam engines is also power. And science was built in part uh, about that. The tragedy of the war was that no matter what carnage unfolded, they believed there was not only a science of ballistics, but a science of war a way of predicting how many men per mile of front would win the objective. They thought if they understood the science of war, they could control its outcome. They could simply overpower the chaos. In the end, they weren't fighting each other. Both sides were fighting the chaos of reality. In the end, the chaos defeated them all, and 10 million men died.